Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 50 years of sharing God's unconditional love and grace. Welcome to the Gospel Truth broadcast. Welcome to a very special edition of the Gospel Truth. We have to stay with what God called us to do. David wasn't God's first choice. And yet, look how awesome things turned out. You always do what's right. You always tell the truth. You will not compromise. This is our teaching on lessons from David. Welcome to our Tuesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm continuing a series that I just started yesterday talking about David. I have this book entitled Lessons from David. The subtitle is How to Be a Giant Killer. And I have this in Spanish. I also have a study guide, over 300 pages in this study guide, specifically designed to help you teach other people these things. This is a great tool, and I encourage you to check it out. And then we have DVDs and CDs on this same thing. Yesterday, I gave a brief introduction to this and just showed that it's important that we learn lessons through the Old Testament stories of people that God recorded. And it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 6 through 11, that this is why He wrote these things, is for our learning, so that we can learn through them the good things to do and also the bad things to avoid. And then we started talking about David. And actually, David doesn't come on the scene until 1 Samuel chapter 16. But we started in 1 Samuel chapter 13 because I said this yesterday, that I, David's story didn't just start with him. It actually started with Saul, his predecessor, the first king of Israel. And likewise, our story is not all about us. This is one of the huge mistakes that people make today. They don't realize that, you know, Paul said it this way. He says, no man lives unto himself, no man dies unto himself. Whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. And our relationship to other people and to the times we live in really shapes who we are. You know, I make this point when I teach on leadership in our Bible college, but you go back and look at all of the people that we consider to be great figures in history, in American history. You can look at Washington. You can look at Lincoln. You can look at uh, FDR and people like this. And every one of these people w w rose up during a time of crisis. And it was actually the times that they lived in that pushed them into this position of importance. You can see the same thing, you know, like with Winston Churchill in the UK and on and on you could go with different people. But uh, lots of times it's the situation that we find ourselves in that causes these, uh, you know, causes God to use us in a specific way. And I actually teach our students that when things are dark spiritually and bleak, that is a great opportunity to let your light shine. You can, if you're in a totally dark place, a little tiny uh, match can, you know, light up, make a big difference. If you were outside in the bright sunlight, nobody would even notice the light coming from a match. But if you're in a totally dark place, it makes a big deal. And when we live in a dark time, you, it, just standing up and taking a stand can make a huge difference. So anyway, I don't want to go back and re-preach all of that yesterday, but it's important that you recognize that a lot of what how God is working in our life is because of what other people have done, either positive or negatively. And I used the example yesterday of how Saul disobeyed God. He, he justified doing something that he knew was wrong. God told him that you are the king, you're over the civil affairs. Samuel was the priest, and yet... Saul went ahead and stepped into the office of the priest. He offered a sacrifice, which was he knew was wrong. He said, I forced myself in 1 Samuel 13, 12. He knew it was wrong, but he let circumstances cause him to compromise what he knew was right and wrong. And because of it, Samuel said unto him in verse 13, that you have done foolishly. And he says, thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which... He commanded thee, for now would he have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. And as I ended yesterday's program, I was sharing that this shows that if, Sa if Saul would have obeyed God and have trusted him and continued with the humility and the dependence upon God that he started his reign with, we would have never heard of David. And that's a shocker to most people. 
BECAUSE, MAN, THERE'S SO MUCH IN THE BIBLE ABOUT DAVID. FROM CHAPTER 16 OF 1 SAMUEL ALL THE WAY THROUGH THE END OF 1 SAMUEL, INTO 2 SAMUEL, AND EVEN INTO 1 KINGS IS STILL DAVID'S STORY. AND THEN DAVID WROTE THE MAJORITY OF THE PSALMS. DAVID IS SPOKEN ABOUT. JESUS IS CALLED THE SON OF DAVID. DAVID IS A PROMINENT FIGURE IN THE BIBLE, AND YET HE WASN'T GOD'S FIRST CHOICE. IF SAUL HAD NOT DISOBEYED GOD, IF HE HAD CONTINUED TO DEPEND UPON GOD, WE WOULD HAVE NEVER HEARD OF DAVID. TO ME, THAT'S HUGE. THAT'S HUGE BECAUSE THAT SHOWS THAT SOMETIMES GOD'S PLAN B CAN BE BETTER THAN WHAT PLAN A WAS. WE DON'T KNOW EXACTLY WHAT THINGS WOULD HAVE BEEN LIKE IF SAUL WOULD HAVE REMAINED FAITHFUL TO GOD. BUT WE CAN SEE THROUGH SCRIPTURE THAT WITH DAVID, IT WAS AWESOME. DAVID LIBERATED THE NATION OF ISRAEL. HE EXPANDED THE KINGDOM TO THE LARGEST, um, YOU KNOW, THE LARGEST BOUNDARIES THAT THE NATION EVER HAD. HE DID SO MANY GOOD THINGS. HE WROTE SCRIPTURE. THE PSALMS, WE WOULDN'T HAVE HAD THE PSALMS IF IT HADN'T BEEN FOR DAVID. AND YET, THIS VERSE IS SAYING THAT DAVID WASN'T GOD'S FIRST CHOICE. IF SAUL WOULD HAVE OBEYED GOD, THERE NEVER WOULD HAVE BEEN A DAVID, OR WE WOULD HAVE NEVER HEARD ABOUT HIM. HE WOULDN'T HAVE BEEN KING. HE WOULDN'T HAVE WRITTEN HIS PSALMS. THAT'S AMAZING. NOW, THIS OPENS UP SOME DOORS TO SOME THINGS THAT ARE BEYOND MY ABILITY TO FIGURE OUT, FIGURING OUT WHAT WOULD HAVE BEEN, COULD HAVE BEEN, SHOULD HAVE BEEN. Uh, YOU KNOW, ONLY GOD CAN FIGURE THOSE THINGS OUT. BUT HERE'S MY POINT IN SAYING ALL OF THIS, IS THAT LOOK HOW WONDERFUL THINGS TURNED OUT WITH DAVID, AND THIS WASN'T EVEN GOD'S ORIGINAL PLAN. GOD CAN MAKE PLAN B OR C OR D OR Z SO GREAT THAT YOU WONDER HOW THINGS COULD HAVE EVER BEEN ANY BETTER. AND HERE'S ONE OF THE APPLICATIONS, ONE OF THE LESSONS THAT WE LEARNED FROM TALKING ABOUT DAVID, AND THAT IS THAT YOU MAY HAVE MESSED YOUR LIFE UP. AND I'M NOT SAYING ANY OF THESE THINGS TO CONDEMN ANYBODY. I'M, I'm SAYING IT TO GIVE YOU HOPE. THAT MAYBE YOU'VE BEEN THROUGH A DIVORCE AND IT WAS JUST DEVASTATING TO YOU. MAYBE YOU HAVE BEEN THROUGH SICKNESS MAYBE you, YOU FAILED IN YOUR BUSINESS. MAYBE YOU'VE HAD A MORAL FAILURE. MAYBE YOU HAVE STOLEN MONEY. MAYBE YOU'VE BEEN IN JAIL. MAYBE, YOU KNOW, JUST ALL KINDS OF THINGS, AND YOU THINK, I'VE RUINED THINGS. HOW COULD GOD EVER USE ME? GOD ALWAYS HAS A PLAN B OR C OR D OR WHATEVER. GOD ALWAYS HAS ANOTHER WAY TO GET YOU THERE. YOU KNOW, I, I'LL SAY IT THIS WAY, THAT IF YOU ARE USING ONE OF THESE GPS NAVIGATION SYSTEMS, AND IF YOU MAKE A WRONG TURN, IT DOESN'T MATTER WHERE YOU GO. IT DOESN'T MATTER WHAT YOU DO. THAT, that NAVIGATION SYSTEM <clears throat> CAN ALWAYS RECALCULATE AND PLOT A COURSE FROM WHERE YOU ARE BACK TO WHERE YOU'RE SUPPOSED TO BE. IF A NAVIGATION SYSTEM, A MAN-MADE SYSTEM CAN DO THAT, I CAN GUARANTEE YOU GOD CAN GET YOU BACK ON TRACK. IT DOESN'T MATTER HOW MUCH YOU'VE MESSED UP. It does, YOU MAY SIT THERE AND THINK, IT'S JUST OVER. I CAN'T... Uh, HOW COULD GOD EVER USE ME? WELL, YOU MAY HAVE RUINED THE ORIGINAL PLAN, BUT IT SAYS IN ROMANS CHAPTER 11, VERSE 29, THAT THE GIFTS AND THE CALLINGS OF GOD ARE WITHOUT REPENTANCE. THAT'S ROMANS 11, 29. SOME OF YOU NEED TO GET THAT SCRIPTURE AND WRITE IT ON YOUR MIRROR, SOMEPLACE WHERE YOU CAN SEE IT, BECAUSE YOU JUST THINK, I'VE GONE TOO FAR. GOD COULD NEVER USE ME. THINGS WILL NEVER WORK OUT NOW. WELL, SAUL MESSED UP, AND YET GOD HAD ANOTHER PLAN. AND WE KNOW NOW, IN HINDSIGHT, THAT DAVID, HE WASN'T GOD'S FIRST PLAN, AND YET LOOK HOW AWESOME THINGS TURNED OUT UNDER DAVID. IF GOD CAN DO THAT WITH DAVID, GOD CAN DO IT IN YOUR LIFE. GOD CAN TAKE WHATEVER PROBLEMS YOU'VE GOT, AND HE CAN GET YOU BACK ON COURSE AND HE CAN MAKE PLAN B SO AWESOME THAT YOU'LL WONDER HOW IT COULD HAVE EVER BEEN ANY BETTER. I DON'T KNOW HOW SAUL BEING KING AND HIS SEED REIGNING FOREVER, I DON'T KNOW HOW THAT COULD HAVE BEEN BETTER THAN WHAT DAVID DID. BUT THIS IS WHAT GOD IS SAYING. IF YOU WOULD HAVE TRUSTED HIM IN THIS SITUATION, HE WOULD HAVE ESTABLISHED YOUR KINGDOM UPON ISRAEL FOREVER. AND IN VERSE 14, BUT NOW THAT KINGDOM SHALL NOT CONTINUE. THE LORD HAS SOUGHT HIM, A MAN AFTER HIS OWN HEART, AND THE LORD HATH COMMANDED HIM TO BE CAPTAIN OVER HIS PEOPLE, BECAUSE THOU HAST NOT KEPT THAT WHICH THE LORD COMMANDED THEE. SO THIS IS TALKING ABOUT DAVID. WHEN IT SAYS THAT HE SOUGHT HIM A MAN AFTER GOD'S OWN HEART, THIS WAS REPEATED 
IN ACTS CHAPTER 13, AND IT'S TALKING ABOUT DAVID. DAVID WAS A MAN AFTER GOD'S OWN HEART. AND IT SAYS, GOD HAS SOUGHT HIM A MAN AFTER GOD'S OWN HEART. LET ME SHARE THIS WITH YOU OUT OF SECOND SAMUEL, CHAPTER 5, AND IN VERSE 4 IT SAYS, DAVID WAS 30 YEARS OLD WHEN HE BEGAN TO REIGN, AND HE REIGNED 40 YEARS. NOW, HERE IN FIRST SAMUEL, CHAPTER 13, IT SAYS THAT THIS INSTANCE THAT WE WERE JUST READING ABOUT HAPPENED IN THE SECOND YEAR OF SAUL'S REIGN. SAUL REIGNED FOR 40 YEARS, SO THAT MEANS WHEN HE DIED, IT WAS 38 YEARS AFTER THIS INSTANCE WHERE GOD SAYS, I HAVE SOUGHT A MAN AFTER MY OWN HEART, AND I HAVE COMMANDED HIM. HE PUT IT ALL IN THE PAST TENSE. AND YET, 2 SAMUEL, CHAPTER 5, VERSE 4, SAYS DAVID WAS 30 YEARS OLD WHEN SAUL DIED. I'll, I'LL GO THROUGH ALL OF THIS and, AND PUT IT ALL TOGETHER IF YOU AREN'T FAMILIAR WITH THESE SCRIPTURES LATER. BUT uh, ANYWAY, SAUL WAS... HE REIGNED FOR 40 YEARS. IT WAS 38 YEARS AFTER THIS TIME WE'RE TALKING ABOUT. DAVID WAS 30 YEARS OLD AT THE DEATH OF SAUL. SO PUTTING ALL OF THIS TOGETHER, HERE'S WHAT IT MEANS. THAT WHEN GOD SAID THAT I HAVE SOUGHT A MAN AFTER MY OWN HEART AND I HAVE COMMANDED HIM TO REIGN OVER THIS PEOPLE, THIS WAS EIGHT YEARS BEFORE DAVID WAS BORN. I THINK THAT'S AN IMPORTANT PIECE OF INFORMATION. SO BEFORE DAVID WAS EVEN BORN, GOD HAD ALREADY SPOKEN AND COMMANDED HIM TO REIGN OVER HIS PEOPLE. NOW AGAIN, THIS IS GETTING INTO THAT REALM THAT'S BEYOND HUMAN ABILITY TO FULLY COMPREHEND AND EMBRACE BECAUSE WE JUST, YOU KNOW, IT'S HARD FOR US TO SEE THE FUTURE AND SAY WHAT WOULD HAVE BEEN, COULD HAVE BEEN, SHOULD HAVE BEEN. BUT GOD CALLS THOSE THINGS WHICH BE NOT AS THOUGH THEY WERE, AND GOD SAID HE HAD ALREADY SOUGHT OUT THIS MAN AND HAD, HE HATH COMMANDED HIM TO BE CAPTAIN OVER HIS PEOPLE, AND THIS WAS EIGHT YEARS BEFORE DAVID WAS BORN. SO THIS BRINGS UP ANOTHER GOOD POINT, AND THAT IS THAT IN FIRST CHAPTER OF THE BOOK OF JEREMIAH, THE LORD SPOKE TO JEREMIAH, AND HE SAYS, BEFORE I FORMED YOU IN THE WOMB, BEFORE YOU CAME FORTH OUT OF YOUR MOTHER'S BELLY, I SANCTIFIED YOU, AND I ORDAINED YOU TO BE A PROPHET UNTO THE NATIONS. GOD DIDN'T ONLY SAY THAT TO JEREMIAH, HE SAID IT TO ME. I CAN SHOW YOU THE EXACT PLACE, JANUARY OF 1973, THE KINGSLEY PLACE APARTMENTS IN DALLAS, TEXAS. GOD SHOWED UP, AND GOD SPOKE THAT TO ME. AND GOD SAID, BEFORE I WAS EVEN FORMED, HE SAID THIS ABOUT JEREMIAH, HE SAID IT ABOUT ME, HE ALSO SAID IT ABOUT PAUL. PAUL SAID THIS OVER IN GALATIANS CHAPTER 1, VERSE 15. HE SAYS, GOD HAS SEPARATED ME FROM MY MOTHER'S WOMB. YOU KNOW, MOST PEOPLE THINK THAT GOD LETS US KIND OF DO OUR OWN THING, AND SO IF WE BECOME A SINGER, IF WE BECOME GOOD IN BUSINESS, IF WE HAVE TALENTS AS AN ARTIST, GOD LOOKS AT US AND THINKS, OH, I COULD USE THAT. AND SO HE CHOOSES US BASED ON OUR LIFE EXPERIENCES AND THE WAY WE'VE DEVELOPED OURSELVES, ETC. BUT NO, THE SCRIPTURE TEACHES THAT BEFORE YOU WERE EVEN FORMED IN YOUR WOMB, GOD HAD A PLAN FOR YOUR LIFE. AND THIS VERIFIES THIS. GOD IS SAYING THAT I HAVE SOUGHT OUT A MAN, AND I HAVE COMMANDED HIM TO REIGN OVER MY PEOPLE. AND THIS WAS EIGHT YEARS BEFORE DAVID WAS EVEN BORN. THAT IS AWESOME. YOU KNOW, I JUST RECENTLY DID A SERIES ON HOW TO FIND, FOLLOW, AND FULFILL GOD'S WILL, AND I EXPOUNDED ON THIS QUITE A BIT. IF YOU HAVEN'T GOT THAT SERIES, IT WOULD REALLY BE A BLESSING FOR YOU TO BE ABLE TO GET IT. BUT YOU WERE CREATED WITH A PURPOSE, AND YOU MAY NOT HAVE EVER DEVELOPED YOUR TALENTS. YOU MAY NOT HAVE... Uh, YOU MAY FEEL LIKE YOU DON'T HAVE ANY ABILITIES, BUT THAT'S NOT SO. GOD'S NEVER MADE A DUD. HE HAS A PERFECT PLAN FOR EVERY PERSON WATCHING THIS PROGRAM RIGHT NOW. A PERFECT PLAN. AND MANY PEOPLE, I BELIEVE THAT MOST PEOPLE MISS GOD'S PLAN BECAUSE THEY FEEL LIKE IT'S JUST KIND OF UP TO THEM TO PICK AND CHOOSE AND DO WHATEVER THEY WANT TO. THEY HAVE THIS FATALISTIC KIND OF THING THAT K SERA, SERA, WHATEVER WILL BE, WILL BE. THEY'RE LIKE WATER. THEY JUST GO TO THE LOWEST LEVEL. THEY TAKE THE EASIEST ROUTE. THEY AVOID CONFLICT. AND I HAVE LEARNED THAT THAT IS NEVER THE WAY IT IS IN THE KINGDOM OF GOD. GOD IS GOING TO CAUSE YOU TO FLOW UPHILL. GOD IS GOING TO CAUSE YOU TO GO AGAINST THE TRENDS. GOD IS GOING TO GIVE YOU SOMETHING TO DO THAT IS IMPOSSIBLE FOR YOU TO ACCOMPLISH IN YOUR OWN STRENGTH AND POWER. 
AND IT MAKES YOU DEPEND UPON HIM. THAT'S THE WAY THAT THE KINGDOM OF GOD OPERATES. THE WORLD OPERATES LIKE WATER, JUST LEAST RESISTANCE, GO TO THE LOWEST LEVEL, WHATEVER IS THE EASIEST. GOD, IT'S JUST THE OPPOSITE. GOD IS GOING TO CAUSE YOU TO DO SOMETHING THAT IS BEYOND YOURSELF SO THAT YOU HAVE TO DEPEND UPON HIM. AND SEE, MOST PEOPLE DON'T LIVE WITH THIS SENSE OF DESTINY. THEY LET CIRCUMSTANCES JUST MOLD THEM. BUT ONE OF THE THINGS I LEARNED THROUGH DAVID IS THAT HE WAS CALLED AND ANOINTED BEFORE HE WAS EVEN BORN. I FIRMLY BELIEVE THAT GOD PLACED A CALL ON MY LIFE BEFORE I WAS EVER BORN. AND I BELIEVE THAT WHAT I'M DOING TODAY, GOD HAD ALREADY PREDETERMINED. YOU KNOW, I DON'T HAVE A WAY OF KNOWING WHETHER I'M GOD'S FIRST CHOICE FOR WHAT I'M DOING OR NOT, BUT IT IS POSSIBLE THAT HE CALLS SOMEBODY ELSE TO DO THIS, AND uh, THEY JUST DIDN'T FULFILL IT. I DO KNOW THAT THERE WAS A GUY WHO WAS WORKING FOR ME, AND THIS MAN WAS A WONDERFUL MAN. HE WAS A FRIEND OF MINE, AND HE DID A LOT OF GOOD THINGS FOR US, BUT HIS TIME IN THIS MINISTRY WAS OVER. HE BROUGHT US TO A CERTAIN LEVEL, AND HE COULDN'T TAKE US ANY FURTHER. I KNEW IT. I KNEW IT FOR TWO YEARS, AND YET I JUST COULD NOT BRING MYSELF TO to FIRE THIS GUY BECAUSE HE WAS A FRIEND, AND HE HAD DONE SO MANY GOOD THINGS FOR ME. AND ANYWAY, I WAS AGONIZING OVER THIS. LIKE I SAID, FOR TWO YEARS I KNEW IT. AND FINALLY, I WAS PRAYING AND I SAID, GOD, I JUST, I HATE TO DO THIS. AND THE LORD SPOKE TO ME AND HE SAYS, NOBODY IS INDISPENSABLE. HE SAYS, THERE CAN BE OTHER PEOPLE. I'LL RAISE UP SOMEBODY. NOBODY IS INDISPENSABLE. AND THEN HE SAYS, NOT EVEN YOU. AND HE SAYS, IF YOU WON'T DO WHAT I TELL YOU TO DO, I CAN GET SOMEBODY ELSE. AND ALL OF A SUDDEN I SAID, I THINK I COULD DO IT. AMEN. AND I HAD TO STEP UP AND DO WHAT GOD HAD TOLD ME TO DO. AND YOU KNOW, IN JUST A VERY FEW YEARS, WE DOUBLED uh, IN OUTREACH, IN INCOME, IN JUST SO MANY DIFFERENT WAYS. AND IT TURNED OUT, IN HINDSIGHT, TO BE EXACTLY WHAT GOD WAS TELLING ME TO DO. BUT uh, NOBODY IS INDISPENSABLE. AND uh, YOU KNOW WHAT? THE WAY THAT THINGS HAVE WORKED OUT, IT'S WORKED OUT EVEN BETTER. I REMEMBER GOING TO Catherine KUHLMAN'S MEETING. SOME OF YOU MAY NOT REMEMBER OR KNOW WHO Catherine KUHLMAN WAS, BUT SHE WAS A LADY BACK IN... I FORGET EXACTLY WHEN SHE DIED. I THINK IT WAS EITHER IN THE 80s. I THINK IT WAS IN THE 80s THAT SHE DIED. BUT ANYWAY, SHE HAD A MIRACLE MINISTRY, SOME OF THE GREATEST MIRACLES I EVER SAW IN MY LIFE WERE AT Catherine KUHLMAN'S um, MEETINGS. AND I MEAN, IT WAS POWERFUL. AND THIS WOMAN... Um, SHE SUFFERED A LOT OF CRITICISM, NOT ONLY BECAUSE OF HER MINISTRY. SHE WAS OPERATING IN MIRACLES, AND OF COURSE MANY PEOPLE BELIEVE THAT THAT'S NOT FOR TODAY. BUT SHE GOT A LOT OF CRITICISM BACK IN THE 60s AND THE 70s FOR BEING A WOMAN MINISTER, WHICH WAS EVEN MORE UNPOPULAR THEN THAN IT IS NOW. AND ANYWAY, SHE WAS TALKING TO THE LORD ABOUT IT AND SAYING, GOD, YOU KNOW, WHY AM I DOING THIS? WHY DID YOU CALL ME TO DO THIS? AND THE LORD SPOKE TO HER AND SAID, CATHERINE, YOU WERE NOT MY FIRST CHOICE. SAYS, I TALKED TO SOME MEN ABOUT TAKING THIS MINISTRY AND THEY WOULDN'T DO IT. AND I THINK THAT THE LORD TOLD HER SHE WAS THE SIXTH CHOICE, THE SIXTH PERSON THAT GOD HAD ASKED TO HAVE THIS ANOINTING AND OTHER PEOPLE REFUSED IT. AND YET, IF YOU WERE FAMILIAR WITH Catherine KUHLMAN'S MINISTRY, IT WAS JUST AWESOME. I REMEMBER ONE TIME I WAS AN USHER AT HER MEETINGS AND I BROUGHT IN A WOMAN WHO WAS ON A STRETCHER, AND THIS WOMAN HAD BEEN FOLLOWING Catherine KUHLMAN AROUND TO MANY DIFFERENT SERVICES. AND PART OF THE JOB THAT I HAD TO DO AS BEING AN USHER WAS YOU HAD TO CLEAR THE AISLE OF ALL WHEELCHAIR STRETCHERS AND THINGS LIKE THIS. AND THIS WOMAN WAS ON A STRETCHER, SO I HAD TO PICK HER UP AND PUT HER IN A SEAT AND THEN PUT HER STRETCHER OVER IN ANOTHER AREA. AND AS I PICKED THIS WOMAN UP, THIS WOMAN WAS AS CLOSE TO DEATH AS I COULD IMAGINE ANYBODY BEING. SHE WAS LIKE A HOLOCAUST. SURVIVOR IN ONE OF THESE CONCENTRATION CAMPS. I COULD PUT MY HAND AROUND HER THIGH. IT WAS JUST BONE. THERE WAS... IT WAS LIKE HER SKIN WAS JUST STRETCHED OVER BONES. SHE PROBABLY DIDN'T WEIGH MORE THAN 60 OR 70 POUNDS. AND I PHYSICALLY PICKED THIS WOMAN UP. I KNEW THAT SHE COULDN'T EVEN HOLD HER HEAD UP. SHE COULDN'T LIFT A HAND. AND THEN AFTER I PUT HER IN HER SEAT, I WENT DOWN TO THE FRONT SO THAT I COULD WATCH AND SEE WHAT HAPPENED. AND ALL OF A SUDDEN, HERE COMES THIS WOMAN RUNNING AND PUSHING HER STRETCHER. AND SHE JUMPED UP ON THE STAGE. AND I SAW THAT WITH MY OWN EYES. I FELT HER. I PICKED HER UP. MAN, THAT IMPRESSED ME. AND REMEMBER THAT THAT WASN'T EVEN GOD'S FIRST CHOICE. WHAT WOULD HAVE HAPPENED 
if somebody else had responded? I don't know, but it was so glorious, the things that I saw through Catherine Kuhlman, you wonder how it could have been any better. So this is one of the main points that I want to get across is that David wasn't God's first choice. He was plan B or plan C, and yet look how great things turned out. You may feel like you just ruined things and it could never work out. God's plan B for you can still be so glorious that it is well worth the effort. So you need to pick yourself up and you need to quit sitting there and, and just giving up and writing your life off as I've wasted it, I've ruined it, how could God ever use me? God still has a purpose in your life. I use this verse, but Romans 11:29 says, the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. If God ever had a plan for your life, if God ever called you to do something, you might make it difficult. You may get to where people won't forgive you. You may get to where you have trouble forgiving yourself. But I can guarantee you that God has forgiven you and you need to pick yourself up and you need to get back on track and let God get you back on course. You, let, you need to let Him recalculate and I promise you that God can get you from where you are to where you're supposed to be. But it starts with you. It has to take faith on your part. I believe that God is speaking to a lot of people today that you just feel like your life's over. You've blown it. Look at Moses. Moses is another example that he killed a man thinking that that was the way God was going to bring deliverance to the Jews. And it cost him a lot of misery. He had to go into the wilderness for 40 years. It was not the way that God wanted it to be. But Moses never quit. He never gave up. And he was able to recover. After 40 years, he recovered and he went back to Egypt and I mean one of the greatest displays of the power of God through an individual recorded in all of the Bible. They, uh, Moses went down and without a weapon, without, you know, an army, without anything in the natural, all he had was God and God's rod, God's stick. And he went down and defeated the mightiest nation on the face of the planet. He brought out millions of Jews. He, he formed a nation. God used him in ways that are unparalleled to this day. And he blew God's plan for his life the first time around. But you know what? He didn't quit. He didn't give up. And I just want to encourage you that you may feel like you have totally blown everything that God has for you. But this is one of the things that I learned through David. David wasn't God's first choice. And yet, look how awesome things turned out. Moses blew it, but he was able to recover. You can recover. If you are breathing, God still has a way of using you and getting you back on track and doing things in your life. Today, Andrew and his partners would like to offer you his book, Lessons from David, absolutely free. To receive this free book, go to awmi.net. This offer is limited to one free book per household and only available for a limited time. So go to awmi.net and get yours today. I just want to emphasize once again that it is really important that you get this product. This book is a life changer and we not only have it in English, we have it in Spanish right here. And then we have a study guide. This is over 300 pages and it is a great discipleship tool. And then we have DVDs that were taken from my television broadcast and also CDs. This teaching on David would change your life. I really believe that. So once again, I encourage you to receive this. Some of this is free. Our announcer will give you all that information. You can get Andrew's Lessons from David book in either English or Spanish today absolutely free as a special website offer when you go to awmi.net. This offer is limited to one free book per household and is only available in the U.S., U.K., Canada, and Australia. This teaching is also available in a study guide, a CD album, or in a DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. Each of these resources is available for a gift of any amount. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. 
You can become a Grace Partner or order resources through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download many free resources. Or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Our helpline number is 719-635-1111. If the lines are busy, remember you can order ministry materials or become a Grace Partner 24 hours a day, 7 days a week at awmi.net. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. How can one person make a difference in our nation today? You can by voting in this year's midterm election. On Tuesday, November 6th, you can join millions of your fellow Americans and cast your vote too. I'd like to encourage you to pray and then get out and vote in our midterm elections in November. I believe that this could be the most critical election that we've had in a long, long time. And any gains that we've made in the last couple of years could be totally wiped out. Please go to the effort. It's important. Pray about it. Respond. Faith without works is dead. Get out and vote and be a part of the answer instead of part of the problem. To find out more information about the candidates in your area and where they stand on the issues, go to truthandliberty.net. I would like to invite you to come and join me on November the 3rd. We are going to dedicate our brand new auditorium in Woodland Park. We've been about three years, nearly four years, in completing this. And I tell you, it's a 3200 seat auditorium. I'm going to have Jesse Duplantis and Kenneth Copeland with me. Jesse will be in the afternoon. We'll be giving tours of the new building and facilities. And then Saturday night, Kenneth Copeland will be dedicating it. And uh, it's going to be a great time. I believe we're going to be full. We need you to register. You can go to our website and get all of the details, times, and all of the things. And we also are having a brand new musical that is written just for the dedication. And it's going to be, I think, on the Friday night before. But we will be having this new musical about David. It's going to be on November the 3rd is the dedication. Go to our website, awmi.net, and check it out.